الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول الکریم اما بعد السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ہم گلا یو کو جوائن می اگین فار آور سیکنڈ ایپیسوڈ آن سیرت و خاتم النبیین ان وچ وی آر ہوپ فلی اوور دا ویکس اینڈ منتھس ہیڈ وی ول بی ایبل ٹو ان شاء اللہ پٹ ان فرنٹ آف یو پریزینٹ ٹو یو دا اسٹوری دا بایوگرافی آف دا فائنل پروفٹ پروفٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آور فرسٹ ایپیسوڈ Uh, covered the introduction as such, but also to explain the status of the Prophet Sallallahu But there was particular attention given to why, why, why should we get to know the Prophet of Allah? Why should we get to eventually love the Prophet of Allah? Uh, and I hope that I, in that particular episode, was able to present to you, uh, to put forward to you a case and an argument for the reason why was as Muslims must accept and love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today, uh, today we're going to uh, explore the, uh, more the motivation uh, behind why we should uh, uh, get to know the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and eventually uh, increase our affection towards him until eventually that affection reaches to love. Uh, and so this is the motivation behind it. I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic rather, that last week uh, or last episode, the motivation was there, uh, but this will further add to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَزِيمًا Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning, this ayat is in uh, Surah Nisa, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that we descent upon you, we revealed upon you, we descended upon you, the book and the wisdom, and we taught you that which you did not know. But also, and the point that I, uh, the emphasis that I want to make is on this part, is وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَزِيمًا That the bounty and favor upon you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great, عَزِيمًا So this is showing the bounty uh, and great favor bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Similarly, we find at the beginning of the third para in Surah Al-Baqarah, تِلْكَ الرُّسُلُ فَضَّلْنَا بَعَدْهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْدِ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ كَلَّمَ اللَّهُ وَرَفَعْ بَعْدْهُمْ دَرَجَاتِ That these are the messengers, Rusul, who فَضَّلْنَا بَعَدْهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْدِ That we gave some more bounty and more favor than others. عَلَىٰ بَعْدِ مِنْهُمْ They are from amongst them, those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to. كَلَّمَ اللَّهُ And there are others, رَفَعَ بَعْدَهُمْ دَرَجَاتِ So from this we can understand one which the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed great bounty upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the second we thing we can understand is that amongst that great bounty is that he's also being given extra, a multiplicity, a, an increase of that darajat upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in particular. We're going to now explore the numerous episodes, the numerous situations, the numerous instances in which we see this great rank of the Prophet ﷺ. And we start with the Prophet of Allah ﷺ statement himself when he said, Ana Sayyidu Walid Adam, Wala Fakhr. I am the leader. And Sayyid is also used for master. I am the master of all humans. And I do not say that in boast. I'm not saying that in arrogance in any way, shape or form. So we can see that when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is speaking, he's talking firstly about his characteristics which gives him this status. And this status is arm. He doesn't specifically link it to the world, and nor does he specifically link it towards the hereafter. He says it quite generally. So what gives a person a great status in the world? Now, many of us may say, or some of us may say, having a lot of money, uh, having uh, power, having authority, that's status. But in reality, it's not. It's a, it's, a mirror, it's a mirror reflection. It's a mirage. It's not a reality. It seems to the possessor of it that he, that's what he, or the one who doesn't possess it, that that's what I need to possess. But once he does possess it, eventually he does not feel that satisfaction that he thought he would achieve by it. No, what is being described here is good character, great character. Individual who professes and uh, possesses and manifests great characteristics towards others and also even in, the, in his own private company. And this is not just a public display 
of behavior or characteristics. But this is also in private with his wives, uh, with his uh, associates, with his friends, with his children. He continued to show this great character. So that's one. And then in the hereafter, the reward a person gets because of this great character. It's a, it's a darajat that he gets. So this, this fadl, which uh, Rasulullah was given in the dunya, is based on his manaqib and his sifat. And the one which is in his akhirat is his maratib and darajat. And we can see that. So this is a, a great status that we can recognize. Another one which is ties on to this one is Rasulullah said, Wa biyadi hamd. I have within my hand, in my possession, the banner of praise uh, on the Day of Judgment. And I have no arrogance, so I don't say that out of arrogance. Now, the banner itself, now when we refer to a banner, this is uh, in days gone by, when people would go into war, what you'd find is the, the, the great honor would be bestowed upon one person to carry the banner, the flag, uh, for the soldiers, for the army. We see a similar uh, example now when uh, the Olympics are taking place. And when the Olympics are taking place, one of the athletes will carry the, uh, the flag of the nation that he's from or he, she is from. And this is a great honor for that individual to be able to represent, but not only represent, to lead their country uh, onto the uh, uh, particular stadium. Now, days gone by, as I said, this is what would happen in war. Rasulullah is saying that on the day of resurrection, that I will be the only person who will possess this banner. That's not necessarily, that's not just over all other humans, but that's over all other anbiya as well. So it's a massive status and a massive rank. Furthermore, he mentions that uh, Adam from Andunahu Tahta Lua Yomil Kiyama. Adam alayhi salatu was salam and all those uh, and, uh, who come after uh, and other than him or lesser than him will also be under my uh, banner on, the, on this great day. Now, why was Adam والسلام, particularly picked out? Well, he is considered as Abu Hassan, the father of all humans. And if he is the father of all humans, then irrespective of the status of the child, the father is always given respect. So, for instance, even if one person is a great scholar, uh, or he's a very pious person, or he's a very uh, uh, honorable person, he will always show respect towards his father. He will not disrespect his father. He will allow his father to go through the doorway first. He will allow his father to take his seat first. So this is showing respect towards one elder, one's elder. And that's to recognize, the, uh, to recognize the status of this individual. Now, you can't get a greater father than Adam والسلام, because he is the father of fathers. Uh, he fathered every single human uh, indirectly. But yet still, the Prophet of Allah is saying that I will carry this banner uh, even uh, above Adam uh, the, the, the next point we can raise here is that he is the only Prophet for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has غَفَرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَرَ That is forgiven for him any past errors and any future errors. Now obviously our belief is that anbiya are ma'soom, they are sinless. They don't commit sins, but they have errors of judgments, uh, uh, for instance, and we'll see some examples of them uh, where they're considered as, uh, as, as making mistakes. Uh, and these mistakes can happen. However, the Prophet ﷺ has been told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his past errors of judgment and also his future, those which haven't even taken place yet, have also been forgiven for him. We do not have any record of any other Prophet being given that particular status. And in fact, we see this further played out on the Day of Judgment when people are rushing around looking for one Nabi or another Nabi in order to ask for intercession. And every Nabi is saying, nafsi, nafsi. So, for example, Adam والسلام, will say, look, I made a mistake. I made an error of judgment. I ate from the tree when I was told not to do so. Nuh والسلام, will say that I asked my, uh, my Rabb with respect to when my son was drowning, uh, when the floods came, and I asked him that, Ya Allah, you promised me that my family would be safe and uh, my son is from my family. So I questioned or I asked, the prof I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, without necessarily having the knowledge or, or being, uh, 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 putting that question appropriately. 
Ibrahim والسلام, where he used uh, kind of evasion tactics uh, uh, three times, once when he was uh, informed by his, his relatives and his, uh, his people that there was a festival taking place and he was invited across to this festival. Uh, to, to, to celebrate with them and he didn't want to, want to go because it was a, a, f a religious festival, uh, a polytheistic religious festival and this wouldn't have been appropriate for a Nabi. So he said, I'm ill. Uh, second thing he said was when he was with his, his wife and he came into a particular land in which the king was a tyrant and the king would abuse uh, married women before the husband would, 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 would be with his wife. Uh, in order to protect his wife from that, he said, she is my sister, meaning she is my Muslim sister. And finally, when uh, uh, the, and I've not necessarily given to you in chronological order, uh, if I had given to you in chronological order, it would have been the ill, and then the third one that I'm going to mention to you now, which is the breaking of the idols, when he broke the idols and he hung the axe around the biggest of idols, uh, he mentioned that the, the idol had, had or, or one way of reciting it is that the idol had broken it. So in all of these three, he used evasion tactics in order to avoid uh, aggression or oppression uh, from a zalim. Uh, and Musa alayhi salatu was salam, as a fourth example is when his uh, uh, Qipti, uh, people, somebody from his tribe was fighting uh, with the Egyptian, uh, Egyptians and uh, he came to protect his, uh, his own tribal, uh, his own uh, member of his tribe and he punched the other individual and, and killed him on the spot. So in all of these scenarios, all the Anbiya are saying nafsi, 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 but when the Ummat and the people go to the Prophet وسلم, he doesn't say nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. Uh, why, does he, why does he not say that? Because he's well aware that his uh, errors of judgment have all been forgiven. Similarly, we find uh, on the same situation, in the same setting, Rasulullah said uh, that he is the first of intercessors and he's the first whose intercession will be accepted. So first he has the status that he's the first of intercessors because we know that other Anbiya will be able to intercede, angels will be able to intercede, scholars will be able to intercede, pious people will be able to intercede. So many individuals will have the opportunity to intercede, but Rasulullah will be the first to intercede and people will gain courage when they see the Prophet of Allah interceding. But also he's the first whose intercession is accepted. And we see that as well. Um, we also see that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that every single Nabi was given a dua and that dua was such that it would be guaranteed to be accepted. And uh, most if not all of the Anbiya had made their dua whilst they were in the world. They did not hold back their dua. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose to hold his dua back and he chose to use it in the hereafter uh, in order to be able to intercede uh, on behalf of humans. There's a verse of the Quran which says, uh, That I swear by your life, or I swear by your age. Uh, indeed, they are in their intoxicated state, wandering uh, blindly, uh, wandering with no direction, uh, just no, no, no sort of uh, purpose in life. Uh, they just seem to be going here and there. And sometimes when we reach uh, a particular place in uh, or we're going through a phase in life we seem to lack direction we just kind of cling on to anything which comes along uh, the latest fashion uh, the latest thing that's going on we just kind of jump onto it we don't have istiqama in our deen every Ramadan comes and we say you know what this is the Ramadan where I make my change this is the Ramadan where I choose a new life and then sadly Ramadan comes and goes and we're back to our normal ways that's a side point. The point that I wanted to raise was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take qasam, uh, apart from taking qasam in, in huge uh, personalities or huge uh, uh, items. For example, was shams, wal qamar, wal layl, wal nahar. Many places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, wal ash. Many places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and he takes qasam by the biggest of things, the biggest of personalities, those things held highly in religion, those things held highly by humans, uh, which they look up to and admire. Allah SWT takes qasam with that. Here Allah SWT is taking qasam with the life, with the age of the Prophet So we're seeing the 
extra motivation, if we needed any, to why we should pursue getting to know this man, why we should pursue to familiarize ourselves with this man, why we should pursue to stay and continue throughout the whole series of this Siratul Khatim in Nabiyyin, and also read alongside a text as well, so that we continue to be fully aware of this and share with family and friends, because it's important that when we find a good thing, that we tell others about it. Furthermore, we find that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the other anbiya, he addressed them by their name. He did not address them uh, by uh, a title. For instance, uh, we see, Ya Adam Uskun, Ya Isa ibn Maryam, Uskun ni'mati alayk, Ya Musa inni an Allah, Ya, ya Nuh, Ya Nuh ihbit bisalam, Ya Dawood inna ja'alnaka khalifa fil ard, Ya Ibrahim qal saddaqta ru'ya, Ya Lut, Inna inna rusulu rabbik. Ya Zakaria, inna nubashiruka. Ya Yahya, khuzul kitab. Everywhere we see the names of the Anbiya are being taken. What about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He says, Ya ayyuhan nabi. Ya ayyuhan rusul. Now you can notice that the title is used. This is very similar that when we address our elders, we might say, Abaji or Amaji or Abuji or Amu, whichever phrase, whichever language we use. And when we address a learned person, a scholar, we'll say Mufti Saab or Mawlana Saab or Sheikh Saab or Hazrat or words to that effect. We don't use his name. Likewise, children won't use the father's name. They will always use his title. And the reason for that is, is because when you address somebody senior to you, it is khilaf of adab uh, to, to use their name. Similarly, when we address our uncle or auntie or grandfather or grandmother, we'll always use uh, their uh, titles rather than use their names. We deem it inappropriate to use their first names. In fact, we find it quite weird when somebody asks us our father's name or mother's name and we have to repeat it in public. Um, so, these are, these are, so, so why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing the Prophet sallallahu by his, his title? Why isn't he addressing him uh, by his name? Because without any shadow of doubt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is superior. He is akbar. He is greater than everything. He is uh, above anything. I, you know, words cannot describe his status. Words cannot describe the status of humans in relation to him. Words, you know, I, I would need a full series really to describe the status of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how humans are in relation to him. It's a no, it's a no contest. Uh, I, I, you know, I couldn't even start the discussion to be honest. So it just begs the question why Allah SWT is using a title to address the Prophet I guess by now you're beginning to understand the status of the Prophet of Allah وسلم, his high maqam and this is how Allah SWT is sort of educating the masses of how he should be addressed. So for instance even when uh, a, 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 a greater scholar or even a teacher is introducing his student to somebody he won't use his student's name. He won't say, oh, this is Amjad, by the way, or this is such and such, by the way. He will add a title to him. Why? Because he wants to, for the people around, them to respect this person. And they may misunderstand by the teacher addressing this person by, on a first name basis, or the way the teacher might address him, those around him might think, oh, well, this person is of a low status. This person can be addressed by his first name. This, you know, he doesn't mind. And it's misunderstood. So in order not to, like, you know, another example is the way a husband might speak to his wife and the way a wife might speak to a husband. They won't address each other in the same way in front of their children. Why? Because they don't want to put into the mind of the children or into the hearts of the children that, like I have, uh, uh, as we say, kulag up, like I have open uh, uh, chat, like I can talk freely in front of uh, uh, your mother and like your mother can talk freely to me, in your case, obviously that's not the point. And, and that's another point I want to sort of further elaborate on, is that when we tell our children, we don't say, um, go call you know, my wife. We don't say, uh, go call and we use her name. We'll always say, go call your mother. Why do we say that? Because we, it's the children and they need to understand the status of their mother. And also it is other to address this person through their relationship with them, not through the individual's relationship. So this further expounds and details this position why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa by saying, Ya ayyuhan nabi and Ya ayyuhan rasul uh, without necessarily addressing him by Ya Muhammad. Uh, whereas all the other anbiya, he feels free to address them in that way.
So we can see why is this? Because obviously we've already seen in the, one of the few points that I made at the beginning of today's episode that he is Sayyid, he is the master, he is the, the leader, Sayyidul Anbiya, he's, the, he's, the, he's being given this high status and high maqam, not just in, uh, in the hereafter, but also in the world, uh, because he was addressed in the world. So this is a, a, a very high status that he possesses, uh, and he obviously uh, uh, is being addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way. Miracles. We have many stories of miracles, uh, about certain miracles which... Isa alayhi salatu wasalam performed certain miracles which Musa alayhi salatu wasalam performed Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam and to be honest I could list them you know Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam I could list all the Anbiya and not a single Nabi has gone past that did not perform miracles and then miracles they performed in front of their people were for a purpose and that purpose was obviously to draw them towards Islam to draw them, and I say Islam because every religion was Islam, which was a monotheistic faith, the belief in one God and the belief in those messengers and what message they brought with them. It's only humans afterwards turned them into various isms and turned them into different religions and uh, gave them uh, their own definitions. Uh, and this is what obviously changed. But these miracles which they performed, what miracle did the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi perform? Well, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi performed many miracles. We see, you know, for instance, uh, a, a cup full of water where the Prophet sallallahu would take a water of this quantity which would be poured uh, into his uh, blessed hands uh, and, and as he would open his fingers, uh, the water would run through his fingers uh, and it would fall through his fingers and many men would come uh, and perform, many of his sahaba would perform wudu with that water. Similarly, uh, when they would complain uh, of lack of food because they were traveling, uh, the Prophet of Allah ﷺ would say, right, everybody bring their food together. They would pile their food together on a leather mat. Rasul Allah ﷺ would make dua and uh, then the people would eat and eat and eat and they would, they would get their fill. Similarly, we know at the time when the Prophet of Allah ﷺ was digging the khandak and uh, Sahabi realized that Prophet of Allah was looking hungry. So he went to his wife, he made some food. Uh, and he whispered because there was only enough food for five, six people. He crept up to the Prophet of Allah and whispered in his ear and said, uh, Ya Rasulullah, bring a few people, there's some food for you. And Rasul Sassam made a amelan. Obviously, the, the Sahabi was somewhat frightened, but he knew there was wisdom in this. And Rasul Sassam went forward. He said, Tell your wife not to take the uh, bread out of the oven and not to take the pot off the uh, stove. Rasul Aslam took some of his blessed saliva, placed it inside the pot and on the bread, and then he said, right, don't take any out. All you do is just keep taking the bread out, tearing it out from what's cooking inside the uh, oven and taking out what's cooking inside the stove, but don't lift them off. Five after five after five, or t you know, ten men after ten men after ten men, so many people ate to their full and then they left. Yet that food sufficed. So the Prophet of Allah performed many miracles of barakah, but we're not talking about those miracles. And I mentioned also the miracles of many Anbiya, and I asked the question, how do we know that the Anbiya performed these miracles? Well, none other than the miracle of the Prophet Wasallam, and that miracle of the Prophet Wasallam was the Qur'an. So his miracle overshadows all the miracles of all the other Anbiya. Why? Because again of his great status, his great stature, the position he's been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with this, these mu'jiz, this mu'jiz, this miracle has lasted for 1400 years over 1400 years. Now, whereas, for example, when Isa salam, brought the dead to life, when Isa salam, cured the leper, when Isa salam, cured the blind, then the only people who accepted Islam were those people who were around him, and also those who news reached that this is what Isa salam, did. So you're talking maybe, you know, uh, a small number of people that, were, that believed due to the miracle. We're not talking about people who bring belief on Christianity. I'm talking about bringing belief based upon the miracle. Whereas the Prophet Sallallahu miracle exists every day and has done and will exist till the end of time. And I mentioned to you, how do we know about these other miracles? Well, we only know about those other miracles because we find them in the Quran. So we find out Musa Alayhi staff and how it miraculously swallowed up the serpents and the snakes that were put together by the uh, magicians. We only find out about the, uh, um, the miracle of Isa Alayhi because it's mentioned in the Quran. 
how he took some mud and shaped it into the form of a bird and then blew onto it and as it as it flew off it became a bird until it was out of sight and, and collapsed we know of the miracle of ibrahim when he took four birds four different types of birds were told to remove their heads and cut their meat up and he kept the head separate mixed all the meat up put it on four separate hills stood in the middle with the heads in his hand and basically the meat flew up above each hilltop uh, sort of whizzed across until each bird was perfectly formed and then they flew headless and took their heads out of the hand of Ibrahim so we, we know all these miracles because of the Quran so the Prophet of Allah's miracle uh, far extends the miracles of all the other Anbiya and exist to this day so next point uh, whilst we carry on with these uh, reasons this excellence of the Prophet of Allah uh, is about the actions which occurred even before he accepted, uh, but rather even before his prophethood was declared to the people. But to find out about that and to find out about the many other reasons why the great nature of the Prophet needs to be understood and why we need to take studying the seerah of the Prophet series, uh, series rather, rather than series, is to join me uh, next week uh, or next uh, episode, inshallah, where we will further carry on and explain the great status of the Prophet Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I hope you can join me again. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.